Commissioners, uh, for September the 22nd, if we could please introduce ourselves. <clears throat> Lisa Daria, Deputy Clerk. Bridget Doherty, Communications Manager. Leslie Hervey, Clerk to the Board. Good afternoon, I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Faludo, County Administrator. Thank you so much. Stephanie Summer Dumas, President of the Board. Welcome everyone here. Uh, we're gonna start like we always start with a silent prayer. And then after the silent prayer, we will have a Pledge of Allegiance. I would just ask that uh, if you would like to please have a silent prayer. There was a young 15 year old that was shot and killed on his birthday. Uh, that's gonna, of course, devastating to the family and to think about his birthday every time and what happened. Uh, my understanding, they have made an arrest after it was only like two, two days later. So his name is Sean Lewis. And if you could please keep him in your prayers. Thank you for silent prayer. Amen. And if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Samara Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, we have now presentations. Uh, it's a proclamation recognizing Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team for their victory. Yeah. And, <laughs> Special Olympics Ohio Division Three State Championship and Commissioner Driehaus will uh, provide this recognition. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you to all the coaches and athletes that are with us today. We are very excited to celebrate your victory uh, with the softball team. And so I do wanna recognize the individuals in the room. And so when I say your name, if you would just please give us a wave or stand up so we know who you are. Um, so the head coach, uh, already standing is uh, Rich uh -huh. Seibert. Thank you for being here. And he is the one that helped organize all the athletes. All right. John Long, the assistant coach. So the next person is the coordinator for Special Olympics. And I do wanna say I've got a soft spot for this individual because my son, Andrew, used to be the coordinator for Special Olympics. And so that individual is Ryan Gallagher. Now for the stars of the team, uh, we will recognize you all by name. Please stand up when I say your name, Aaron Heisel. Hello. Mike November. Tanner Seibert. We didn't get that on camera, but I wish we could. Oh, all right, all right. Um, we had a little something going on there. He tried. That's right. Uh, Dylan Feltner, Jake Hudson, Jeremiah Irvin, Joanne Keckler. Not here yet, but we're going to give her a round. Give her a round. So thank you all so much for taking the time to come down. Um, we are very excited to recognize you. So we've got a proclamation as uh, Commissioner Dumas said, recognizing your victory. And so I'm gonna read this uh, resolution and then give the coach an opportunity to say a few words. So whereas the players of the Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team fought hard to maintain a successful 2022 season to reach the division three state championship game, including a win over Franklin Westerfield, Special Olympics to advance to the state championship. And whereas on September 10, 2022, the Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team achieved victory 16 to six over Stark County Board of DD in the Special Olympic Ohio Division Three softball state championship game to win the division title. And whereas head coach Rick Seibert 
and the entire Hamilton County Special Olympics community were integral in guiding the team to victory through their unwavering support. And whereas Hamilton County is very proud of the Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team for their strong finish and successful winning season. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners hereby congratulates the Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team for a victorious season and commends the team on winning the Division Three state championship and be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners declares and proclaims that Thursday, September 22nd, 2022, so today be known as the Hamilton County Special Olympics softball team state championship day in all of Hamilton County. Wow, that's uh, quite a, a, a proclamation. Thank you so much. Uh, a little choked up, honestly. This been uh, this is our it was our second chance at this. So three years ago, pre-COVID, we were in the state championship game, um, semifinal game, and our best player had a epileptic seizure. So they had to take they had to take Mike, our cleanup hitter and third baseman, off the field in an ambulance. They spent three days in the hospital, and they asked the team what they wanted to do, and they said we want to win it for Mike. So we played the state semifinal game. We won that game. We played on the uh, state championship game and we had two outs, man on second and third with our best hitter up. And he popped out to the catcher. They just put their glove out. We lost by one run. Mm -hmm. So six weeks ago, we started practicing and I got the team together after practice, practice and I said, what should we name our team? And unanimously they said, the Avengers they wanted to avenge that loss. So we are the Avengers. Dylan is our captain. Tanner's got our shirt, our Avengers shirt. Mm -hmm. So the team we played was Stark County and we had an interesting uh, uh, meeting before the game with the other coach and the umpires. And I was just, he said, uh, we're not, we're not uh, used to playing with teams like how you play. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we have, we have 11, we have 12 players, but we only play 10 but we'll probably pinch you on a few of the players. I said, oh, oh, interesting. I said, we're gonna play everybody and we're gonna bat everybody. This is Special Olympics, right? He goes, do what you wanna do coach, but we gotta we got get it approved by the, by the umpire. So the umpire goes away for a few minutes and comes back, comes back and said, just play the way you wanna play. So everybody here on this team contributed, hit, fielded, and we won. We beat the team that was defending two-time state champion 16 to six, and we did it our way. Right. We, we did it the right way. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's always about the athletes. And I couldn't be more proud of this team and my coaches and the families and our support staff and Ryan and Special Olympics to uh, any of you all for this, this great honor. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a photo, but I, um, I, my colleagues would like to say a word. Yeah, just a couple words. I remember seeing on the news that you guys were going. And I, to be honest, I didn't know what had happened. So I'm so happy of the results for sure. Being a softball player, I played semi-pro myself. And so uh, it's just the, the funnest game it is. So thank you so much for, and congratulations again. Uh -huh. I want to say congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus for uh, bringing this to our attention. And I love beating Stark County. So I've got some friends over there. So I will be bragging. I will be, I will be on the phones tonight doing a little bragging. But um, the story, it's always the story uh, before the glory. Uh, the disappointment, but coming back, never giving up. And I love the title Avengers. So congratulations. And we're just so uh, proud of you all. Thank you. Get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you guys, if you guys can uh -huh. yeah. a little bit more. Come a little bit, yeah. Perfect. Nice.
something to celebrate yes we should yeah okay we're going to move forward we have one additional proclamation in honor of kinship care month and i'm going to read the proclamation we have someone here who's going to accept are you accepting okay great so i'm going to read the proclamation and then if you would like to say a few words for sure um it's a proclamation in honor of kinship care month whereas all children deserve to live in a safe, happy, healthy environment. And whereas relatives take care of more than 2.6 million children nationwide, more than 227,000 in Ohio and 550 children in Hamilton County. And whereas grandparents are our most common kinship caregivers in Hamilton County, providing nurturing home environments. And whereas children raised by kin suffer less trauma, fewer mental health and behavioral issues and better permanency outcomes. And whereas we understand that caring for children can be difficult and expensive and Hamilton County has pushed to boost its support for kinship providers, giving them a monthly subsidy and other help. And whereas September is recognized locally and nationally as National Kinship Care Awareness Month to honor the relatives who take over the care of children in their families with the children's parents when the children's parents cannot care for them. And whereas we recognize the commitment of these kinship providers and thank them for their dedication and for helping create the best possible outcomes for vulnerable youth. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors the contributions of all those who are making a difference in the lives of children in kinship placements. And I would also say making a sacrifice. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby proclaim September 2022 Kinship Care Month in all of Hamilton County and it's signed by all the commissioners. And I'm going to open it up for my colleagues to say a bit, but kinship care has always been something that was in, important when I first came in. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus had, had started that process, and then we as a board decided we need to add a little bit more money to that and make it, and the, the uh, families are not doing it for the money, certainly not, but there are more grandparents than ever taking care of these young children, and our emphasis is to try to keep them with the family or in the home if we can and not place them out. So uh, Vice President Reese, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I just want to um, uh, commend uh, the both of you um, on the kinship care uh, before I got here and was ahead of the state. The state is now following Hamilton County. I think we need to keep a record of when the state follows Hamilton County um, because they do it a lot. But this was kind of underground with um, kinship a lot of grandparents and uncles and aunts were stepping up and uh, just doing it because it's the right thing to do, but weren't necessarily connected to any help of resources. So there were resources to help with the, uh, with the children, but they weren't getting them. They were just 
making a way out of no way. And um, I, I consider it, they were underground, if you will. And I think the kinship program now brings them from underground to above ground to say that, hey, uh, there are resources here to help you. Uh, this past the year, we were out with the 513 relief bus, and I'm glad we got kinship day because we have these programs, but we want to continue to get it out to people. And there was a, um, a grandparent, her uh, daughter had uh, had an aneurysm and died. She was dealing with the depression of that, but had three young grandchildren. And she just stepped up and did what she could. She was coming to see us about rental assistance. But when she got there, thanks to Jobs and Family Services that was sitting down with her and assessing her, they said, did you know about the kinship program? She had no idea that she qualified for food and other resources. And she started crying. And she said, I just can't believe this. I'm not alone in this. So there are a lot of folks that feel like they're alone in this. And we're here to tell you as Hamilton County, uh, you're not alone in it through our kinship uh, care program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. And thank you, Madam President, for bringing this uh, to our attention. I think it's always great to be reminded of the kinship care providers in this community. They are really champions to the kids that need the help and the service. And here at Hamilton County, um, it's correct to say that we were in front of the rest of the state when it came to the stipend for kinship providers. And now we are on parity with um, the foster care providers. And I think that's as it should be because the needs aren't different whether it's a foster parent or a kin parent, the needs remain the same. And so uh, we have taken leaps and bounds uh, with the leadership over at JFS guiding the way and with the uh, policy direction from this board, we've been able to in increase that stipend as we've gone. And all three of us have been a part of that. So thank you for bringing it forward. And I'm glad that we are recognizing kinship care in Hamilton yes. County. Thank you so much. Would you like to come forward? Good afternoon. My name is Jamil Tarver. I'm the Kinship Engagement Director for JFS, and I'm honored to be before you all to accept this proclamation. Um, kinship care has been near and dear to my heart throughout my entire career. I've been in these homes with these caregivers and seen their struggles and understand how hard they work to be able to support. And it's a labor of love. So to be able to have supports that come in directly impact their lives and the lives of their children, providing permanency and safety and um, just direction and guidance and support for these families. They appreciate it and it is an invaluable resource. So I thank you all for your guidance and moving forward with this program to be able to provide these supports to these families. And as I talk to them, they appreciate them. So I thank you all. We thank you. The picture with you will come down there. Thank you so much, Christmas. Very good. Our next item on the agenda, public comments. Um, do we have anyone on Zoom or anything? No, no public comments today. Okay, very good. I will go to our next item, comments and motions. I actually do not have a, a lot to say today. I was uh, I gave opening remarks for the supplier diversity exchange meeting that was held out uh, at one of the hotels. It was a huge conference. And uh, as we look at diversity in procurement and purchasing, and I was able, honored to give the opening remarks. 
Also, I attended yesterday our investment advisory board meeting, and um, I'm sure Jill Schiller, our treasurer, will be coming forward with some very positive outcomes as it relates to the county's investments and how we're advancing uh, monetarily by some decisions that she's made as a, the first uh, treasurer for Hamilton County. So that will be all for me. I will pass it over to Commissioner Reese, Vice President Reese. So. Thank you. Um, just wanted to highlight um, this weekend, I attended the uh, Roseland Community Mural Paint Day that was um, sponsored by, um, led by Annie Ruth, uh, the great uh, artist Annie Ruth, uh, as well as Black Art Speak and the Roseland Business, um, Business District Community uh, Organization. And um, I didn't mess it up. I put a little paint where they told me. <laughs> And I want to give a, a big shout out to Brent Billingsley, who helped me so I wouldn't mess up the mural. Uh, so excited about that. And you can check it out on the corner of Reading Road and uh, Summit, Reading Road and Summit. Um, also, I got a chance to do stuff that I always love to do is talk to young people. And I got a chance to talk to University of Cincinnati uh, Gen 1 uh, induction ceremony. Now, and uh, I was invited by Brandon Elliott, who once was my intern and then worked for me at City Hall. And he was here. I think we had the basketball event. He's the guy that's six foot eight. And I'm so proud of what he has become. Uh, gone on, got his master's degree, worked at Xavier University, and now works at University of Cincinnati with a program that's dear to him because he's a first generation college graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, his mother passed uh, last year. But one of the things she told me, she said, I'm so glad to see him graduate. And that was what she really wanted to see. So now he's giving back. He's part of the Cincinnati, uh, University of Cincinnati Gen 1. And they have um, scholarships for first generation students. And so they brought them in and it was their induction ceremony. And I got a chance to uh, be a speaker for them and share some some tips that I thought was important uh, so that they not only start at UC, but they finish and also graduate. There were also students that were from the Gen 1 program uh, that were back. They were in their third year, some of them in fourth year. That's a fifth year program. Uh, one of the young men um, I'm going to give to our HR department because he's in cyber security and he's doing cybersecurity for UC as an intern. Uh, and I said, well, we got an internship program. And so myself and um, of, uh, what is it, uh, First National Bank, uh, we were fighting over him. So I, I hope he gets, uh, I'm trying to make sure we get to him, but uh, he wants to do that for the federal government. So this will be a great opportunity. They were very excited about our intern and fellowship program. Uh, I also uh, met with Susan Burke, uh, uh, Council on Aging, and I know she's uh, meeting with each, going to be meeting with each of us around the issue of transportation for senior citizens, and that's very important. Uh, they've got, I guess, one monopoly transportation company, a uh, private company, and she thinks there's opportunity for others uh, because we don't want seniors. You got an appointment at 8 a.m., you're done at 9 30 10 but you got to wait till 12 o'clock or one o'clock to get picked up so she's looking at something like a similar to an uber type model um, that she's going to talk to us about uh, each of us about so i'm very interested to hear more about it i uh, also met with latonya springs from housing opportunities made equal and the new director there and they have a report uh which i would like to uh, I don't have it in front of me right now. I wanted to submit it. If I don't submit it today, I'll submit it next week for the record. It's a report about Black home ownership. And as we are doing our affordable housing model and funding and groups a part of that, uh, they have a uh, initiative to how can they increase uh, Black home ownership. They're looking at you know the banks. They're going to have a report on the banks. Uh, we're talking about financial institution, not the Ohio banks, but the financial institution and where they're spending their money. And uh, you had just spoke about our treasurer, uh, Jill Schiller, as we're looking at in the future where we put our money, uh, we may this report may be helpful as we look at doing business with banks, financial institutions that do business with our citizens and have no discrimination on it. 
Um, and they have also a new model re relating to credit scores. So uh, I'd like to submit that to both, uh, to all of us who all have it, but also for Holly and, um, and Jeff, our administrators, to follow up and see uh, what we can do in partnership with housing opportunities, make it equal in this uh, regard. Um, and then I also met with um, the prosecutor's office yesterday, uh, Jeff and I, regarding uh, salaries uh, and losing of prosecutors uh, to Claremont County. Um, and we keep hearing Franklin County, uh, Commissioner Driehaus, we gonna have to do something about that. We gotta call our buddies over there at President Dubas. Franklin County is just rolling in the dough. I don't know how they're doing it. Um, but I will tell you, it's better to live in Hamilton County if you want that total package. But, but anyway, um, looking at that because uh, yeah, obviously we want to make sure that we're not backlogging cases and people tied up in the pipelines because we don't have uh, prosecutors that's able to go in and uh, deal with it. Uh, so um, I know that uh, Jeff is looking at that model um, and he can probably talk more about that. Uh, and as you know, the, the prosecutors, you know, we can set a budget, but they still can go to the state law says they could go to the judges and get what they want anyway. Uh, so I'm hoping we can work collaboratively. Um, and then lastly, I was at CEG Awards. Um, uh, the CEG Awards Collective Empowerment Group uh, this weekend, and a lot of great people got uh, awards. Uh, Angelita Moreno-Jones, who's appointed to our uh, Port Authority Board, she was also honored. And, uh, the owner of Goodies Barbecue, we always love Goodies, uh, was also uh, honored am among others. And they also presented uh, Liberty Bank, uh, who's coming a Black-owned bank that's looking to move into uh, Hamilton County. So interested in that, because Franklin County, by the way, I think they just started a Black bank in, Ham in uh, Franklin County as well. So we're interested in doing that. Um, and I have to give a shout out to my niece. I got to embarrass her again. One of my nieces, I always embarrass my nieces and nephews. And, um, but my niece, our first year cheerleading and uh, just got getting gr very good grades. Both of my nieces, they're at Princeton High School and she is the athlete of the week. So I just wanted to give a shout out to my niece, Tania Stewart uh, for being the athlete of, of the week. And cheerleading is athletics. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. I'm going to be going to her uh, one of the games. I'm hoping to get there today and I'm going to be embarrassing her again, screaming, that's her, that's her. Mm -hmm. She was on TV and I was screaming, that's her, that's my niece. She's like, auntie, you're always embarrassing me. So, um, but anyway, I'm very proud of her. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, but I'm sorry. One more thing I forgot to say. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, just today, uh, Bobby Lovelace came in from Midnight Star one of our uh, Sister A Black Music Walk of Fame inductees. Uh, we had uh, uh, Dr. Gamble sponsors these, the, the awards, but we didn't have uh, enough awards. They ran out because of supply chain issue. And they have been touring all over the war, uh, world, but he came in today, uh, got those awards and, and has been telling us since they've been traveling all over the world, all of the positive feedback that they've gotten about uh, the Sister A Black Music Walk of Fame and what we're doing here in Hamilton County. So just wanted to acknowledge that too, sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple things. I, I do wanna once again, thank uh, uh, Coach Seibert and the Special Olympics team and uh, athletes for coming in. I. I think we should start every meeting with that kind of uh, inspirational story that they had, uh, but congratulations again to them. Um, I did represent the commission at the expansion of Learning Grove down at CityLink. They have put in a new childcare center. It's really something. Uh, the attention to detail related to the furniture, the couches, the color on the walls, the artwork, um, it's very soothing and welcoming for the kids that are down there and the families that are um, putting their kids in, in care there. And, and it's this nice connection between the work of CityLink um, and the clients they serve and then the need for, of those clients for childcare. And so we've opened up more spots. This is something that we know is a need in this community. And so I went and congratulated them on this expansion 
Foundation, uh, that's Learning Grove is kind of the umbrella agency, but the other agencies and partnership were Visions, Child Children Inc., and then CityLink. So congratulations to them for uh, providing more child care slots in our community. And I also participated in a a listening session over at Cincinnati State, they are trying, or they're doing a master plan, a strategic plan, and they were talking a lot about the facilities, but also about how they continue to be uh, a forerunner uh, as a, a technical college or a, you know, a, a two-year institution, um, and how they respond to market demands for jobs that are in demand. And so they are trying to always adjust and be flexible if we need uh, folks to go into nursing, then they are the ones providing those degrees, those associate degrees for those individuals. And so I have always found them to be really great in that space and able to adjust. And so they are in the middle of another planning process. And so I did represent uh, some of the things that we have learned from the community by way of what we are seeing the workforce need is in Hamilton County. So I was glad to participate in that. And then lastly there, I'm just uh, throwing this out there as um, just kind of an announcement. There is an article in the paper, it's in the Inquirer. I think it um, hit the online version today. It highlights our quick response team and the uh, Price Hill project that we have all talked about and invested in. Um, the Price Hill project, it, Price Hill is um, ground zero for many things related to the addiction epidemic. And so there is a, a was a renewed focus and the healing community money from the state of Ohio helped us to pilot this program. But what it does is take a much more proactive approach than we have done in the past for those individuals that are overdosing at a, a high rate, are using drugs at a high rate. And so we've been very proactive in that neighborhood and we have seen a reduction in the calls for service uh, for the EMTs and the police out in that area. So they, they've got some success to point to, um, but this article talks about the individuals that are impacted in Price Hill. And it's really a great article. Tom Sinan is featured as a member of the HC ARC. So I just wanna draw everybody's attention to that. It's, it's well worth the read. Thank you. Great. Um, the period uh, press conference that we had, we, we are, you already reported out on, I forget when we did the press conference. Last uh, week. Yeah. Well, I lost track of that. Um, oh, so, <laughs> so, well, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so we all participated in uh, really a celebration in what we are doing by way of forward movement in response to the Commission on Women and Girls recommendation related to period products. So um, we now have 72 dispensers. Is that right? 72 or is it 42? It's 42. Anyway, we have a lot of dispensers uh, in Hamilton County and all of our buildings so that those that work for the county and visit our buildings have access to free period products. And, you know, this is a matter of equity, uh, period equity for many people in this community that cannot afford products. And so we are hoping that Hamilton County will lead by example. And we've already, um, and Mary Mounty has said, there's already been interest from other agencies and other levels of government that are interested in what we're doing and would like to follow our lead. And uh, some sponsorship uh, inquiries have come forward as well. And so the idea would be that uh, maybe the sponsors can help to um, purchase the dispensers. And then as we have all stated, the budgets of the agencies would absorb the products on an annual basis because we all view this as uh, similar to any other kind of product like toilet paper where uh, we simply build those into our budget and so period products would be similar to that and then eventually get into all of the school systems we have some period products available for free in school systems but it is not done on a, a wide basis and so we're hoping to get there and again that was a, an initiative from the commission on women and girls thank you for the reminder thank you uh, Jeff Aludo, our administrator. Thank you, Madam President. No buy leave items today, but just a, um, a quick, a couple of quick notes. Um, had the opportunity yesterday to serve as a panelist on the uh, chamber's release of their state of the region report. Uh, they did a really great job. I thought of, of of kicking this off. I want to congratulate Brandon Rudd specifically down there, who is the uh, the director of their uh, center for research and data. I think it's going to be a really good. Um, institution uh, within the chamber for the for the region, which will continually track a lot of the metrics uh, that I know the, this board and the county are very, very interested in. So looking forward to the activity of that group, but had the opportunity I was down there to 
to plug the work that this county and this board has done on issues of affordable housing, rental assistance, uh, the federal aid that we've received, et cetera. Uh, so just wanted to uh, mention that. Also, just a, a quick thank you. We've had some renovations done up here uh, recently uh, on this floor, and we'll have some more being done down in our in our lobby and some of our elevators, et cetera. Uh, and I just want to thank um, some of our facility project managers, uh, John Nestor and Burt Watts, uh, for the great work that they do in overseeing these on behalf of the county. So with that, Madam President, back to you. No further comments. Yeah, you're. I'm definitely noticing the change. Their work is just, they're doing a great job, so. Okay, let's move forward and uh, regular agenda item. Our engineer, welcome. Good afternoon. Just one item for you today. Uh -huh. um, it is a resolution awarding a contract to the lowest and best bidder, a and Safety for our 2022 thermoplastic and epoxy pavement striping program. Um, our engineer's estimate was uh, $348,000. The low bid was $271,138 dollars and 25 cents 22 percent under our estimate so it looks like prices are starting to come back to pre-shortage levels that's what i was just getting ready to ask you you know to be reduced like that with the equipment and all the materials costing more so mm -hmm. that's a good yeah we had upped our estimate anticipating a higher bid uh -huh. and it came in lower so that's that was uh very good news uh any questions or comments Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve item one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Rees. Yes. Commissioner Dreehound. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, we will move forward with our consent agenda items. Um, items number two through 16. Um, I did not really have any objections to any of them, but I will say, uh, just mention uh, item four, resolution awarding construction contract for the bank's BP3 bid, it's a uh, 5.1 million. Um, I will go down to item six, a resolution authorizing a consultant agreement with Stantec for $261,000. And then item seven is a resolution number 25 to appropriate grants following the federal fiscal year beginning October 1, 2022, which is a total of a little over 1 million. And I'll move down to um, the well, there's a budget adjustment number eight, number 20, uh, resolution 26 for elections, grant revisions, and banks phase 3C interactive elements. And we have Phil Beck is here for any questions or comments. Item nine is a bid, bid awards and contracts authorized or executed by the purchasing department for the month of August, uh, 3529000 um, which is a little larger than usual, um, but that's what the purchasing department, they always submit what they have uh, sent out, what, I, what they have signed for. And item number 11 is a resolution number P109-22, authorizing the award and execution of an agreement between Alpha Construction of Indiana and the Board of Hamilton County Commissioners on behalf of the county facilities for Hamilton County Taft Center ninth, 10th, and 11th floor renovations for 352,000. And of course, under JFS, we normally have uh, placement and treatment services. So we have item 13 for residential treatment services um, on behalf of JFS for $775,000. And then below we have a petition for annexation, the treasurer's monthly investment report, and then a travel request by the coroner. So I will open it up for my colleagues. Any questions or comments on these consent agenda items? Vice President Reese. Sorry, uh, do I have the correct one? Is item number five on the agenda? Um, it's gotta be held. It's held. Held, okay. That's what I make sure. And I should have said that once at two through 16. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wanted to, uh, we do have item, then I guess uh, number four mm -hmm. and um, the um, item number four would include the since I Black Music Walk of Fame, um, I think this is the last bid. And um, I'm not mistaken, this part was the bid one, right? 
Yes, that is correct, Commissioner. Okay. Yeah, Phil Beck, um, Hamilton County Construction Executive. Uh, this is the final bid package for this phase of the bank's project, phase 3C, uh, bid package three, which is the, uh, uh, essentially the, it pertains specifically to the Black Music Walk of Fame interactive elements, uh, that being the hardware. So this had three trade contracts. One is electrical and audiovisual. Uh, the second is ornamental metals. And then the third is signage. Okay. And then item number eight is still on the calendar, right? That's the budget adjustment. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to just, I want to ask a question of the administrator um, about this budget adjustment, um, because I know there's been a, I guess, few behind the scenes questions. Um, and I want to make sure that uh, these questions are answered because uh, all of us up here, we don't, we don't write any RFPs. We don't put any bids out. Uh, we uh, put ideas out and we estimate what the cost is just as the engineer puts his uh, estimates out. And um, this budget adjustment, I wanted to ask the administrator, what, what is this and, and, and uh, why do we need it? Is it, you know, I know we're seeing this with a lot of construction projects. Uh, I know you had said inflation, so I just wanted to. Yeah, so um, Madam President, Madam Vice President, so the, uh, the, the initial project, if you remember, uh, for, the, for phase 3C, um, which is lot 28 down at the banks, which includes um, a uh, parking facility, it includes uh, the construction of a park and then the interactive elements. Uh, which uh, constitute the uh, Black Music Walk of Fame and the programming associated with that. So we had originally scoped that um, into our budget um, through a resolution passed, I believe, last December uh, at an amount at a budgeted amount of 18.5 million. Phil can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Um, but over the course of the past several months, as has happened with pretty much everything that we've seen, we've seen cost rise. Um, and inflation kick in on pretty much everything supply some of that driven by supply chain. We know that even on this particular project, we're in competition uh, with other major projects throughout the, the country on specific materials like granite, etc. Uh, so the 5.5 million overall relates to the, the escalation of that, uh, of that cost by roughly five to 5.5 million. Uh, some of that is attributable, uh, uh, roughly Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, perhaps a little bit over half of that is attributable to the garage and the park, uh, the rest of that to the interactive elements. So this is not just focused on the interactive elements, but a broad uh, increase in cost uh, uh, across the, the entirety of, of the project. Right. And is this the only project that has inflationary issues? Well, no, I mean, we're seeing cost increases on most of our projects. I think we've reported back on that as we've seen even in uh, in these meetings, uh, some of our uh, work and some of our projects um, miss the engineer's estimates. Now we've started to uh, we've started to control for some of that and we started to adjust and our engineers have started to adjust as we put projects out and scope them and create estimates for them. Um, but no, I think you just look in, in the news and you see that the, the inflation continues across the board and that and that has hit the construction industry just as well. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that um, I want to be clear on that. This is a very positive uh, project. It's a family friendly, outdoor, interactive tourism, economic development project. Uh, it's a project that is on one of the lots of the banks, not the only lot. And it is something that is completely free. A lot of things we develop, even a garage, you got to pay to get in it once we develop it. So you're getting hit twice. Uh, lot 28 was uh, vacant and we couldn't finish the garage. And because of ARPA that came in, from what I've been told, we were able to use ARPA for some other things, which freed up some economic development dollars and allowed us to do this new tourism attraction. Um, 
I wanted to just be clear on when we talk about the banks and our board has been very clear um, coming here. <clears throat> first time that three women been elected since the 1800s. And we have put some new ideas out there. We have opened up the process. Uh, so no longer do we want an Ohio riverfront banks, at least I know I don't want one, where there is no real equity. Um, and so we've been talking about equity and now we have a project that is equity. There are no black owned businesses on the Ohio banks. And we have spent just from the county's budget, $953 million. We have two stadiums and one that we've got to negotiate. And, you know, <laughs> we've got a stadium on the banks, 420 million a great American ballpark, 340 million, plus we have maintenance and repairs. We had property acquisition of 92 million to acquire property. This doesn't include the city. We have garages and infrastructures that totaled $71 million. We have hilltop concrete we've purchased, they haven't left yet for tailgate space of $30 million. And then we have, of course, other projects. We've got a Finley Market Garage we are uh, working on, uh, which I think is going to be great, but it's at $30 million because of cost. And then on the revenue side, we have a Cincinnati Music Festival where predominantly the people that come to that festival in town are African American. They come in and they buy hotels at the highest cost than any other event so far that we've seen. Even the World Cup was not gonna be charging what we charge for hotels. We got money from that and we have an economic impact of $107.5 million comes in every year, the highest, even though majority of the consumers are African-Americans, it doesn't matter, it's the highest that comes in and it goes into our uh, convention facilities authority plus the sales tax stuff and not one dime has been reinvested in the black community. Um, so I'm, I wanna thank, I go down there and I wanna just say the people that's working on this project, they are working. I mean, they, I wanna give a shout out to all the workers. They are working hard to get this done as quickly as possible so we can outrun inflation. We've been trying to outrun it. Um, and as the administrator has indicated, this project is three projects in one. So the people say, oh, the Black Music Walk of Fame. No, that's just on the top of it. But because it's on the flood plain, everything has to be on top of a garage. So we're finishing a garage. We're putting a park together at 15.5 million. That's not even the Walk of Fame. Then the Walk of Fame on top, which we're gonna get to, is at $8.5 million. And then when I look at the total investment that we have made as a county, before all of us got here, but as a county, it's been almost $1 billion of taxpayer money, wherever it is, you know, we got different funds here, but $1 billion almost. And so when you look at the Walk of Fame in the totality with the garage, with the park on top, and finally the Black Music Walk of Fame, we're down to almost less than 1%. I think that's pretty few, frugal, pretty frugal in my opinion. So um, there are things we can't control, as we've said, the inflation, we're trying to outrun it, we're working as quick as we can. Um, and I support this adjustment for a number of reasons. I support it because it's a tourism attraction that's gonna bring people from all over the world and they'll be parking in our garages. I support it because we don't have one black owned business on the banks, even though African-Americans, according to Mr. Uh, Mr. Dabney, Mr. Wendell Dabney's book, you can go and get it. It's where African-Americans lived and was ran off of in an area called Bucktown. Um, we were in that area, got thrown out um, because uh, we're taking taxes from everybody and everybody should be able to have participation. And because it's something that brings people together. I was down there with Bingo Jim and Ken Anderson, the former quarter, uh, quarterback said, man, I can't wait till this is open. I got to be there because music brings people together. 
And it was a missing link. I want to give a complete shout out to Otis Williams of Otis Williams and the Charms, because he's the one that pointed out and said, why can't we be included? He was 80, 85, I believe. And he started crying. Why can't we be included? We've got the Andrew Brady Music Center. We've got the the football stadium, one for football, one for baseball. We've got the bars and restaurants. Why can't we be included? So this was a inclusion, equity, and something that's going to be a tourism attraction that everyone can come to. So I think it's a good investment and uh, I support it, but I wanted to um, make those, uh, put those points out there um, so that we can make sure we have the facts. So again, I want to thank the workers that have been down there working really, really hard to get this uh, project done and uh, ask everybody to mark your calendars next year, July 22nd, 23rd, uh, Madam President, Commissioner Driehaus, community, uh, we'll be cutting a red ribbon mm -hmm. and allowing people to come and it will be completely free. So thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Uh, no, that was the only thing on the calendar that I uh, saw today. Um, oh, I had one other. Uh, I do have one about the um, contract for the signage that's uh, for parking signage on here. Is that um, the digital parking signage? Uh, certainly support it. But remember, we had some signs that were they weren't working and you said they had some supply chain issues. I just don't want to give them a new contract unless they're able to fix those because they haven't been up. You know, they haven't been up five years yet. Yes, uh, Madam Vice President, this is uh, item six, resolution authorizing consultant agreement with StanTech. Um, so this is, as you said, this for the next phase of the variable, it's not only the next, but it's the last phase of the variable message signage system, if you will. Uh, the signs you're speaking of that we are having some, um, uh, some issues as far as procuring uh, replacement parts, which is in the works. Uh, they are signs that are outside of the entrances and exits to uh, uh, parking assets, garages, and uh, surface lots. Uh, it's not all of them. It's uh, about, I'd say about eight total signs, give or take. Um, this is to, uh, first of all, this item six is to approve the design <laughs> of the next phase, not construction, but just the design of the next phase. Um, and that phase is uh, what we refer to as parking guidance. Um, think uh, if you're inside the Central Riverfront garage, it's a very large facility. Um, it's currently in the magnitude 4,500 spaces over two layers. So this system will be a red light, a green light, blue light over every single parking stall. Uh, that is driven by cameras. Um, the cameras have a couple added benefits. Uh, number one, it, it's more security. Uh, these cameras can read license plates. So if we have an issue, um, we will have good uh, definition of our video. Uh, but the other, uh, assuming you park in your parking space with your license plate pointing towards the drive aisle uh, and you forget where you park, there'll be a kiosk where you can type in your license plate and it'll tell you exactly where you parked. So that's what this system is that we're going to. And we have, uh, the county has received a grant from OKI, yes, OKI and ODOT uh, to support this. Uh, it's a $4.4 million grant mm -hmm. with a local match. Um, so they're very supportive of this system. But yes, I know we still have some homework to work on with the last phase. Yeah, no, I was, um, now you said um, with a match, who's the local match? Is OKI the local match? OKI and ODOT, yes. Okay, those mm -hmm. are local matches. Yeah, it's okay. actually, technically it's federal highway funding gotcha. that is administered through OKI and, and um, facilitated by ODOT. Gotcha. Madam President, uh, yeah. Madam Vice President, I'm, I'm sorry, Phil, uh, the, I think what Vice President Reese was asking was, uh, where is the local match coming from? Not where the grant is coming from. The, the, the county, we actually, the county is matching some of these dollars as well, correct? 
Yes. Yeah. So yes. Uh, the question about the local match, I assumed you were asking, are we putting in money to this? Yes. And, and I yes, was just are. trying to find out how much are we lo- Are we matching 50%? No, it's 20, um, 20% match, 20%, yeah, 80% grant, 20% local match, but that's once we get into construction. So this item six um, is design soft costs that is funded by the County hundred percent. Gotcha. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I agree, but again, like I said, here we go with these garages again, but here's my point. Is this the same company that produced those signs on the outside? This is a different company that we're looking Correct. into. This is a design firm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because I'm still not happy about those signs not working. And I just wanted right. to make sure if there's maybe whatever material we use that time, maybe, or what did we do? that we could do differently because they weren't up. I, I said, I gave them five years. They weren't up a year without going, you know, some of them when I was driving down, I was like, what is going on with these, uh, with these uh, signage? So just wanted to make sure if it was anything else we could do differently um, as we're putting those, the new technology up. But you said this would be a different company in a different situation. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Awesome. Uh, also to point out, since it, since those were, um, showing some, uh, some issues, those, those past signs in less than a year, they're covered by warranty. So we made sure we put the company on notice before the warranty expired. Oh, and, uh, so yeah, um, we're bulldogging them. Joe Feldkamp's helping me bulldog. Yeah. You don't want to get on Joe Feldkamp's bad side. So yeah. <laughs> well, good. I don't want to do any done. business with them again. If we got to bulldog them to get our stuff, right. Um, so, but thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I re- appreciate it. Thank you. Bet. Thank you. Thank you. Drewhouse. Thank you. Yeah. I only have one item that I would like to uh, note. It's item number nine. Um, and it is about, it's uh, the item from the purchasing department. Uh, it's about, what is it? 3.5 million in a number of different purchasing items. The one I wanted to note was the first one. It's about $2 million for providing energy conservation improvements to the JFS building. So I just wanted to note it because we've talked a lot about how we wanna move as a county into a space where we're being more green and energy efficient and forward thinking really. And so this is a good example of how that's kind of happening behind the scenes and maybe under the radar a little bit. Um, But when we see these on the agenda, I just think it's important to make sure that we note them. So thank you, that's all I've got. Thank you. And uh, I agree on the the green energy. Uh, Ohio Environmental Council, I uh, talked to them and they, I was bragging about Hamilton County and I sent them a report of what all we've been doing. We're, we're just doing great things as it relates to the environment. So, okay. With no, yes. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Good, good administrator. Keep me wrong. So I'd like to make a motion, if there are no uh, further discussion, um, to uh, uh, approve items two through four and six through 16. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Commissioner Drehouse? Yes. Okay, any further business to come before uh, the board? Yeah, we, well, other than that, yeah, trying to forget that, so. (laughs) So um, I'd like to make a motion for going to executive session pursuant to RC section 121.22G3 to conduct a conference with an attorney concerning the subject of pending litigation. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreamhouse? Yes. Thank you.